Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Stock Market Update video. And today we have a lot to talk about with NVIDIA's earnings coming up and Jerome Powell speaking later this week. So, and as well as QQQ having the bounce that I talked about over the weekend. And we actually got our bounce for two days and now we have a gap up and a retracement. So today we'll be talking about QQQ, S&P 500, as well as the commodities, um, natural gas, gold, and silver as well as the seven mega cap tech stocks, NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Meta, and yeah, those seven. So we have looking at NVIDIA, implied volatility is gonna be plus or minus 11%. So that is quite a bit. So if NVIDIA moves up 10%, QQQ is gonna be likely moving, um, I think NVIDIA is about 0.7% currently, or no, 7%. In the market cap of QQQ, whatever it is, um, is going to be moving 10%. Meaning, if the market cap of Nvidia is 7% uh, of QQQ, QQQ is going to move 0.7%. If Nvidia moves up 10%, if it moves down 10%, QQQ will lose 0.7%. So that's a huge move um, based on how large Nvidia's market cap is compared um, for such a large move. <laughs> Usually these kind of big moves are smaller cap um, stocks, but we'll see. And ADI is a other semiconductor sector um, stock that's going to be plus and uh, 4%, so that's not that big, but uh, it will likely help other semi stocks if we get good earnings. So that's going to be pre-market in the morning, and the video is going to be after close. And that will likely dictate where QQQ will be heading in the next couple of days. If we get a bad NVIDIA's earnings, the whole semiconductor sector is likely going to drop quite a bit, and that will drag KQQ down for sure. So we'll be watching that. And let's get started. So we'll start out with commodities, as usual, and then we will head into QQQ and the rest of the market. So if you guys are just looking for any tickers, jump to that um, time to time. Excuse me. Timestamp below where I put all the times uh, for all the tickers. You can just jump to it by clicking the timestamps. And we're looking at natural gas. So all over the weekend, I was talking about we need to hold this 2.54. And so far, we are still holding, but it's still in a bear flag territory. So on the daily, go from the top of the move to the bottom of the move. So this is A. And the bottom move is B. We have bounce pretty much rejecting from this 0.382 line right there. As long as we don't, bulls don't get over that and close above it, it's a daily bear flag. And um, we have rejected it from it again yesterday. So that's not a good sign because now we're closing at the low of this 2.54 again, testing it. If we do break 2.54 and Friday's low, that's a bear flag confirmed and we're likely heading down to 2.47. And this uptrending support on natural gas, which is this upsetting support, we have been bouncing off at one, two, three. So it's very likely we're going to bounce off of it when we come down to here. Um, to test it. Does it mean the bounce is going to be like a bounce like that? It just means that it will very likely bounce at least to a certain per percentage before to see test if there's any buyers after that bounce. If not, then sellers continue. So far, um, the bear flag hasn't broken yet, but we are at the low of the range. So, And also, the daily trend is in favor of the bears because it's currently still in a daily downtrend. So, so far, bears are in control. Even on the hourly. Uh, we had an hourly uptrend here. That was looking good, but then we rejected from that bear flag level again. And then now... Hourly bears are back in control. So pretty much 2.54 needs to hold again. And Friday's low to negate that bear flag. But as of now, not looking so good because there's no signs of bounce yet. Even this afternoon bounce is just a little small bounce. Yeah, because if you break that, you can see um, these volume lines I mean, where the volumes are the more volume in one area, the less likely it is to cut through. So you can see 
is the last area where there's high volume, meaning that level needs to play defense for the Bulls. Otherwise, if we cut through that, you can see there's less volume down here. It will be easier for the Bears to drag it down uh, further. So we'll see if the Bulls can actually negate that bear flag. If we do negate that bear flag, obviously we need to break above Monday's high. 2.6 is high for us to retest this mirror looking line again this upper trend line of resistance. NV, which is a tradable ticket for natural gas, very similar. You can see it's continuing down as natural gas has down. It's weaker than natural gas. You can see um, it's already broken that uh, Friday's low and headed towards neat support right now. So this is the support that bulls need to hold as well. And it's also in a daily downtrend. So pretty much absolutely bear control at the moment for natural gas across the board. And no signs of a turning around. You can see on ENG, there is zero hourly uptrends. So first thing we want to see for a shift in momentum, whether you're bear or bull, the hourly trend. So as long as the hourly trend is, is not in your favor, um, means the short term wise, nothing is really in your favor. Even if the longer term, so for example, currently daily is in a downtrend. That's a plus one for the bears. And the hourly, even the short term time frame is in bears favor. That means most of the momentum is in bear favor, unless um, it's the first step of the bulls to change the hourly trend back to their favor. And then they could potentially shape up the four hour trend, then the daily. So right now, bears have the daily and the four hour and the one hour. So momentum is all in their favor. So as of now, we don't even have the first step for the bulls to bounce yet. So we'll see if bulls actually do show up or not. They need to show up very soon. Otherwise, we'll be testing um, the low of many ranges. Let's see if there's one here. Slightly, but it looked like it broke already. So, yeah, so this is not a valid line. And bull and cold is just uh, two x leverage. If you guys like to trade leverage, and for UNG, meaning if UNG goes up one percent, oil will go up two percent. And cold is the short side. So if um, UNG goes down two percent, cold would be up four percent. So, because this is a short side, but don't chart these uh, charts. I go over this every time because leverage charts are skewed, and you don't want to chart leverage on the support and resistance. So, if UNG breaks support and resistance. Oil and cold would already break support and resistance. So, don't try that. Just chart UNG and natural gas. All right, let's take a look at this. So, we're looking at gold, but um, we notice that the dollar. Been bouncing because they're inverse correlated and take a look here gold is still very weak even on the hourly structure nothing really shaped up we had an hourly uptrend here but then uh bulls gave it all back that's a neutral trend back to neutral hourly trend and just not a lot of signs even after such much weakness right we be dropping for like straight two weeks and this is all the bounce we got i mean it's still a very very weak bounce from the gold Take a look at the dollar you can see this little drop here was where gold was trying to bounce and now that the dollar is bouncing again uh you got that big drop that you saw on gold there so Yeah, dollar is still super strong, even though it broke out of this rising wedge, bearish, and then it bounced right away. So there's zero signs of slowdown on the dollar at the moment. Small hourly downtrend, and that move just negated all of that. Even on the hourly trend, the trend is back to neutral. As long as dollar stays super strong, 
gold and other metals commodities are not going anywhere um, it's going to be continuing to be very weak although we are testing this level of resistance over here which is top of this range and bottom of this range so dollar bulls is currently testing strong levels of resistance so we'll see if we get over it call this a double top and over this level which is the bottom of this level bottom of this level top of this level so it's going to act as strong resistance if we do get over that let's take a look see where it will go interesting so that also coincides with another level of resistance resistance and resistance so so far it's level of resistance is probably quite strong because there's also resistance here so if this gets over exactly this spot like you're gonna have a breakout towards um pretty much right here where that right around this level so if we do break this current level 103 we're gonna likely go test 104 break out like that potentially so we'll see if the dollar bulls continue the market uh, bulls definitely want to see dollar weaken and stock market bulls as well and uh, commodity bulls as well want to see dollar weaken especially metal bulls silver is a lot stronger than gold even despite uh, dollar strength you can see after this waterfall drop with the dollar strength now silver is outperforming on the bounce so talked about how we held this level over the weekend this uh 20 <coughs> excuse me so i uh, talked about how we held this 22.2 level on over the weekends and that it will likely bounce because it's relatively outperforming gold and pretty much we got that so you can see the hourly trend is always intact for silver after the bounce the hourly uptrend versus gold where it's um, back to a neutral trend already so it's much weaker so we'll continue to look for that and next level for silver we're pretty much right at that level already testing low of this current structure right here So this structure is going to act as strong resistance because you're currently under that structure. If we do get above that, we are looking at 23.7 currently. We'll see. Silver hourly bulls are in control. And we still chase 0 0.382. So we'll see if silver can get over that resistance. So far, I wouldn't say we rejected. We, so, we did reject it on hourly, potentially a little bit. But we bounced, and then the market closed. We ran out of time. So tomorrow will be the actual real test. See if we can get over that or not. All right, let's take a look at the markets. So QQQ, currently we had our two-day bounce on Friday. So over the weekend, I talked about where we had a four-day drop. The fourth day where we gapped down, that's always a good time for it to buy a bounce for a day trader. And we did get that bounce. And then we talked about uh, on Monday where we had another bounce. Today we got another gap up open. And that ended up selling because of that 12 EMA that we talked about over the weekend where it's gonna act as strong resistance. Let me delete this wedge real quick. So on the daily time frame, we have been rejecting from this 12 EMA for the past many times. And because on the way up, it was acting as support, now it's acting as resistance on the way down. And ever since we confirmed that daily downtrend over here, uh, I mentioned that just follow the trend. So when we're in uptrend on daily, just stay long. When you're downtrend on the daily, just stay short. And of course, don't stay in short forever because the market is designed to go up. 70% of the time. So you want to take profit when there's strong weakness, especially like a four-day 
down, and the fourth day is the gap down, and pay some profit. I mean, you had to sell all your positions, you know, you can manage your risk, sell half, set a stop loss, all that kind of things, uh, whatever way you trade it, but um, always locking some profits. So we got gapped up exactly to the spot of 12 EMA, and then rejected so far. So pretty much what we're looking at now is can the Bulls play defense now once we get that daily lower high set? So you guys know I talk about the size of the bounce, the size of the retracement will give Bulls more room to work with. So we had a 3.3% bounce. And we have so far retraced 30% roughly. So bulls have room now. Or if let's say we drop tomorrow a little bit in the morning, right? That is where the bulls need to play defense to set the daily higher low, meaning the low of this is going to be higher than this low. So if they can set the daily higher low and change the hourly trend back to bulls' favor. Right, then now we have a shot potentially to shape the daily uptrend back to bull's favor if we do break today's high. As of now, we don't have any signs of that yet on this drop because this whole move, hourly, is one straight move. So we have to see if the bulls are going to show up to potentially shape up that um, four hour lower high higher or not even on the 15 minute time frame still currently in bear control so but we do have a big enough bounce now for a potential shift in that just like uh back all here every drop here i talked about where there is not enough bounce for bulls to make room so there's no fake outs on this this is just a daily downtrend with zero fake outs and then now this bounce, we'll have a chance to ship up a trend change. All right, can they do that or not? We don't know. So we have to look at the hourly for our guides. And first thing I want to see the bulls is to change the hourly trend back to their favor. Or you can you can technically say this held the hourly trends, or argue it's an hourly neutral trend, but want to see um, bulls break above today's high to get that four hour uptrend back um, continuing so we'll see so likely nvidia it will likely probably dictate that uh, tomorrow so you know let's say we dropped here half a percent and then closed there next thing you know nvidia shows it good earnings up 10 percent after hours right qq is probably going to be up here already as well or NVIDIA shows, let's say we bounce tomorrow, and NVIDIA shows very bad earnings. So next thing you know, KQ is back down here. So pretty much NVIDIA will dictate the use direction for Thursday and Friday. And obviously, Jerome speaking. Big one as well. See if he's going to be more dovish or bearish. Last year when we had um, him speak at Jackson Hold, uh, the market tanked like 6% because of him laying out his uh, bearish plan. For the rest of the year but this year since inflation is this low now we'll see how he's gonna be more dovish or not we'll see all right spy spy is looking pretty similar to qq and we are also looking for that um hourly trend to hold is if we do break below this level, technically you could argue, depending on if you look at the pre-market or not, this is an hourly trend. And if you negate that, and you just look at this as one straight move, technically we are still in an hourly uptrend. Some may argue not, we're in neutral, but um, holes need to show up. Even on the shorter time frame, as you can see, it's full bear control today even on the 15 minutes um see we never really got over the 15 minutes ema 12 we did for a slight bit and came all the way back down close at the low of the day oh 
there's no bulls today. And if bulls don't show up quick enough after this size of this bounce, and we go all the way back down here, and that's a huge red flag where we potentially shaping up weekly downtrends on the weekly time frame. But as of now, we don't want to be guessing. Uh, we need a lot more weeks to ship out weekly downtrends. But if we do ship out weekly downtrends, that's a huge red flag um, for the bulls. So as of now, bulls need to show up for the four hour to potentially continuing this bounce and potentially shaping up the daily uptrend back to bulls' favor. We've already lost the daily uptrend um, back here. It should drop, bounce right here on August 8th, lost the uptrend, and now we are still in a daily downtrend. Even with the size of this bounce, we are still in a daily downtrend because we never changed the trend yet. The size of the bounce, where I always talk about it, is now giving bulls a chance. The probability increases that they can potentially change the trend back to their favor. So now they need to show up pretty much tomorrow or later this week. All right, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, the stock that everyone is watching this week. And I am amazed by Monday's move, uh, where I talked about NVIDIA over the weekend, where I said NVIDIA's bounce is every, uh, every bull's dream, where this is the size of this bounce, where it gives a 7% enough room for bulls to work with, where they can buy the higher low. And that's why I talk about the size of the bounce or the size of the drop is so important. It gives you the probability of the next move. So the size of this bounce gave the probability of the next move. It's obviously a heading higher. And then nobody was expecting the 8.4% on Monday. But that is what we got. And even to my surprise, we pretty much tested all-time highs on this gap up today. But um size of this this is potentially just bears and bulls taking profits um, into earnings because why wouldn't you if you held for a week and a half for 19 percent right just boom one day and the next day another 8.4 percent and then gap up right um a lot of bulls we're going to be taking profit here with such a Sniffing gain in such a short period of time into earnings where it can likely be going down up or minus 10% where it showed you guys the volatility, 11%, right? So half of your gains can be wiped out right away with earnings. So of course, people will be scaling out, taking some profit here, which makes perfect sense with the resistance of the all-time high resistance. And so now, um, yeah. So the only resistance is obviously the all-time highs and earnings would break that like it's nothing if we had really good earnings. Let's say we got a plus 11%, right? We're going to be we're gonna be all the way, uh, let's see, we're going to be all the way up here, right? Plus 11%. If we got a huge break in earnings, right? This resistance wouldn't even matter at all. Just this little bit, right? We'll be up here. Probably testing the 500 mark first, but logical resistance on your level. It really bad earnings. Next thing you know, we're testing this maroon uh, looking trend line down here where it's been acting as a strong support of a trend line for a very long time, this entire year actually. So flat level would give us 13% move down. So very likely if we get bad earnings. So we'll see. Where, um, if you guys like am gambling, earnings is where you gamble. It's a coin flip, but uh, well, anything can happen. Hey, good luck on you guys' uh, earning place tomorrow after hours. Let's take a look at Tesla. So Tesla, I mentioned with weekend, we're very, very likely getting a bounce. Um, and we did. So because um, you can see Tesla is relatively stronger today because of the relative weakness. We're gonna talk about stock like the growth stock where there's relative strength, relative weakness. So if this was relative weakness, once that settles, it will turn into relative strength. So you can see with QQQ being down today, 0.15%, Tesla is up 0.83%. So 
that is the relative strength. 13% bounce in two days. And I mentioned where we are likely bounced to pretty much the spot because that is the low of this structure. That would act as resistance. And let's take a look at the hourly. So hourly bulls still in charge. Hourly uptrend attack. It's just a one straight drop. Now I have to see if Tesla bulls can negate this hourly bear flag. Yep, exactly 0 0.382. You can see every time we bounce to the 0 0.382 line, bears are playing defense. Defense, 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 defense. So that's going to be key. Um, tomorrow, obviously, where QQ is going to go is going to be more key than where Tesla is going to go. But if Tesla negates this bear flag, breaks above it, it will, of course, help QQ as well. And it will continue its four hour uptrend. Currently, the four hour uptrend is still intact. Actually, this is four hour one move. <clears throat> the four hour is only one trade move, so this is not an uptrend yet. So we want to see this low right there being set as the higher low. So now this is where the bulls need to play defense and hold that level and play offense and break above Tuesday's high for four hour uptrend to confirm. If the 4-hour uptrend confirms, Tesla bulls are now back looking at the daily uptrend to see if they can form that. And we're all likely to be looking back up to 252 because uh, this is where all the volume is traded. So that's 252. It's going to be acting as some strong resistance, especially this area. 252 to 262 level is going to be pretty much the area that bulls need to get over. All right, Apple. So Apple, I talked about where we could potentially have a bear break and V-shape. And we got that. And now we are testing this structure of the seven-day sideways range that um, we formed over here. Because um, I don't say we're going to break. I don't, I don't want to say we broke above it already. Because we pretty much closed right on it. We know QQ had a weekday. Apple was relatively stronger. So if QQ has a slight green day tomorrow, Apple is likely to come to test this 179, the top of this structure, the sideways structure. Time for the bulls, especially after a bear break through this sideways structure of seven days. And now we V shaped up it. That means it's a bear break. Lacking follow through. As the bears want to see is because of the size of this break, everything was in their favor for this candle to drop below this one. But they um, didn't. So that's a bear break, lacking follow through. And pulls. So, next level I'm looking at is this level of 179, half 180, psychological zone. And the hourly trend uptrend is our guide. So, we go if this. Uptrend breaks. Bulls are in hourly control, but as of now, they need to take back the um, four hour is also in uptrend now. So they need to take back the daily. And daily is looking good, outperforming QQQ. So we'll be testing the 12 EMA very soon. You can see the 12 EMA has always been holding a support. So this TL looking line is above us. So it's going to be acting as resistance when come up to it. Another day bounce, we are testing it tomorrow. Let's we'll see if bulls can take that back. Amazon, daily downtrend still confirmed right here. So once it broke that low on Wednesday, August 16th, it's a daily downtrend. And currently the bounce also rejected 12 EMA, but as of the bounce now has a chance where the bulls can potentially shape up a trend change back to their favor. Let's see on the hourly, pretty choppy. I'm for Amazon. This is an hourly downtrend, but 
Amazon is holding 134. So as long as Amazon holding sold 134, we'll still we'll have a chance to get that four hour trend back to their favor. And we can I'll call this a four hour trend right here. So Amazon Bulls won the whole 134 for sure. Continuing that far uptrend, shaping that daily trend back to their favor. Because if we do get that bounce, then we're lucky coming up to 136.67, and we'll get more room to shape daily back to Amazon Bulls' favor. Yeah, because the 136 is where it's going to test this level. All right, Google. Google is super choppy and chopping, chopping, <laughs> like it always does in every level. Chops in this level, chops in this level, chops in this level, and now it's chopping in this level. So <clears throat> Google also outperformed QQ today, but we talked about this where you can call it a daily. It's just super choppy. Let's go to the two days, see if we can see any trend. Yep, two days, just a straight. Uh, say it's a downtrend, but now we have a big enough bounce as well where um, Google can potentially shape up a trend change back to bull's favor. So what I want to see is the hourly also holding the 12 EMA, which is this level, 128, and then break above this uh, 130 for us to test this 131.4 level again. I want to just call this a sideways chop zone. One to six and a half and 132. And as long as Google keeps chopping in this zone, it's not going to go anywhere. And we'll see um, when it breaks out of it. Very clear support and distance zone, upper and lower end. No fake outs here. All right, let's take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft's got a similar feel to Apple where it bear break and it V-shaped. It makes sense because after such a significant drop, 15% drop on Microsoft, a name like Microsoft, it's very likely going to bounce in the short term. Um, I'm not saying we're going to bounce all the way up here, but a bounce like this was the most likely scenario. And then we'll see if there's buyers up here or not, or the bears are going to take it back down again. So. Most likely scenario we got was a V shape. And now the bulls can potentially shape up that bounce again. So, you know, you guys know how I talked about the, ever since we had this daily downtrend, um, just follow the downtrend. And you can see there's just no signs of bounce, even on these green days where we have 2.3% and 1.7, 1% here. I never talked about where there's a chance where bulls can potentially shape up this trend change back to their favor. But now, Something like this, where we have a three-day bounce of 4.6%. Bulls have a good chance where on the next drop, they can potentially shape up this daily trend change back to their favor. And uh, it makes sense where bulls play defense because this was the last structure. If we break through that, we're coming back down here, this lower end. Because there's just no volume trade here. Yeah, so I want to see Microsoft bulls. Give me that four-hour trend change back to your us favor. This is one initial move. Now I want to see this pivot being set above 12 EMA and then give us the four-hour trend change back to our favor. If we get the four-hour back, then the chances of us shaping the daily will increase. All right, meta.
Meta very similar to Microsoft where it came down to this important level of prior resistance and prior support for two of this coin size in one area for that bounce. You can see if we do break through that, very lack of volume underneath it. That means where the bulls want defense. Because if the bulls don't play defense here, then look how much room there is to the next level of strong volume. Right, all the way down here. So bulls don't want to see such a significant drop. Of course, after this bounce, if we do get straight up a weekly downtrend, you know you guys know how I talk about weekly downtrends. If that shapes up, it will shift the whole narrative of this um, entire run. That shapes up the weekly downtrend. We're probably going to come down all the way down here to 240. As of now, we don't want to talk about that yet until we start shaping up weekly. Um, this daily trend change is a fake out where it didn't change the trend and then she up the weekly downtrend. That would take us a couple of weeks into September. By that time, we will know. I'll let you guys know obviously ahead of time um, before it shapes up or the likely scenario that it might shape up. But we need to see signs of that. But as of now, no signs of that yet. So this bounce is big enough where it can also potentially shape up the daily uptrend back to the bulls. This 12 EMA, it's going to act as strong resistance as well. So it's coming up and we'll see if Meta can shape up also the far uptrend back to their favor. So we pretty much need to break today's high, get the four hour trend back to Meta's favor, and then it will give us more chances of the daily uptrend. Hourly is currently in the uptrend, so that's our guide. If this is a pivot or a straight move, depends on you, but yeah, I want to see the four hour trend change back to Meta Bull's favor. If not, that weekly can potentially shape up. So we'll see. We'll, you'll need a couple of weeks for us to that to happen. That does it now. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if you guys made it this far or learned anything, feel free to subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow, Wednesday depending on my voice, but have a good rest of you guys' uh, weekend. Sorry, not weekend. Have a good rest of you guys' day. All right, see you guys later.